Hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday. I am so happy to see you here. Hi, Linda, Terry, Leslie, Janet, uh, Mona. I saw somebody else. And Lori. So thank you guys for joining me today on Wednesday. And if you're watching the replay, I really appreciate that. I hope everybody is doing awesome today. Linda, I'm glad you're here because I'm probably going to lose something on my desk today. Look at how packed it is. It's just, there's like stuff everywhere. And um, and I don't know what I'm doing. I, I had an idea and then I expanded the idea, which is what always happens with me. And then the idea just kind of took on wings of its own. And yeah, so I'm going to play <laughs> and we'll see what happens. <laughs> is everybody having a great Wednesday? or a great week, or a great month. Okay, Linda, good, you're in charge of keeping track of lost objects. This, the blue scissors, the blue scissors are what we're using today, so we don't wanna lose the blue scissors. <laughs> so, <clears throat> it started off, I had a bunch of these really cool little things and I wanted to play with them, you know? There's, there's neat stuff in there. And then, of course, I've got, you know, all these fabrics and laces and other stuff. And then I got paper and I just, hey, Doreen, happy Wednesday. And I just, um, I was like, what could I do that wasn't clusters again? That was kind of what I was going to do was clusters, which is, there's nothing wrong with clusters, but I really kind of wanted to go in a different direction. And I'm thinking books, but I'm thinking, you know, Sometimes we get really stressed out when we talk about making a book, whether it's a journal or an artist book or any kind of a book. We, we get a little stressed out. It's like, what's my theme? How many pages does it have to have? You know, how many signatures? What am I going to do with the cover? So I propose we think about it just like a just because book. We're making it just because. And what if we don't even think about signatures? We don't even think about themes. We don't even think about sizes. What if we just think about a single page? That's all we worry about making is a single page. And then when we get enough pages that we like, we can put them together somehow. So that's kind of where my idea has, has traveled today. And that's what I'm going to be playing with. Um, so I, I started bringing out all these other soft things and I realized, no, I kind of, hi, Dina. I kind of wanted to start with getting... Um, these papers are okay, but these other papers are very white. And I'm not going to worry about the sizes. I could decide to put all these together in one book. I could decide instead that maybe what I'm going to do is take one page and mount it to another page. And I could even mount it up to another page and make a wall hanging or make a book page. I'm not going to put the pressure on myself to think about a finished book. OK, I am going to not let the perfectionist in the car with me. She is not even in the trunk. I left her at the bus stop back there in the sunshine. She can just hang out there and wait for somebody else to bother. So I am. Um, yeah. And I have not made backgrounds in this way that I'm going to play today either. So, you know, it's all new. Um, everything is everything's fine. It's all fine, right? <laughs> It's all fine. Let's make me smaller so you can see more of the table. There we go. All right. Is the lighting okay? Hopefully. Did I get my camera crooked? Because this part's okay. Let's see if we can straighten you out maybe a little more. Bring you down. No. What do you think? I do this. I thought I had it all figured out and I didn't. Kind of dark, huh? Let's turn some lights on. There we go. Let there be light. Well, I honestly thought I had all the cameras set up perfectly, but oh well. Let's just be careful not to make a mess all over my desk, right? So, uh, la, 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 la. That's, I was going to leave just one of these big ones down there in case I started spilling all over the place. So let me know what you guys have been doing this week. Let's start with the white one. And remember, you know, if these turn out to be really horrible, it's fine. 
Okay, I just pulled this out of a sketchbook. I just wanted a variety of textures. Wow, and everything went dark. That is bizarre. What happened to, why did it all get dark? I do not know. Hi, Midge. I don't know why my desktop got so dark. Let's see if we can point anything. That's got to be the camera, huh? Let's see if we can fix that. Bear with me another minute or two or three. Hey, Tunder, how you doing? It's not just me, right? This got very dark down here. Uh, let's see. If I do that, haha, -ha, it's a little better. Okay. Dina's been making some ephemera for a couple of journals. Okay, that's good. Well, I hope it's bright enough for you guys because, man, my eyes are really bright. Uh, let's, let's be easy and start with some. Hey, Anise. Oh, Janet, it's got to be really bad up there. Yeah. And it got dark again. So I, I do not know. I've got all the lights on in here. That is so strange. Let's see. Huh. Maybe if I pull this one any closer. Got anything to balance it on? Huh. I don't know. There's always something with technology, isn't there? Let's see. That's definitely not helping. Oh, bother. I don't know what's going on. You can see. Yeah, good, because there's nothing else I can do here. Nothing. I got all the lights on in the place. Okay, well, I'll bring you down if I need to. I don't know what I'm doing here. Um, now, I'm using old sponges. I'm going to use some old papers. I'm going to use fabrics that um, have been dyed with who knows what. Lost my water bottles. And I'm not going to worry about it. Because I really just want to, um, I just want to play. All right. This idea may not work. I, I don't know. And I could get a brush, but ooh, that is bright. I need some brown in here, I can tell. Did I put the gloves on? No, I did not. And this uh, cotton paper, the wetter it gets, it's going to pill up. And I'm okay with that because it means it's going to grab the color differently. It's all going to grab the color differently. That's right. This one does not, the dropper doesn't open. I forgot about that. Which makes it a little less fun. Let's go with the Bombay ink. Because I really don't want it this bright orange. Sorry about that clink. There we go. Tone it down. So 
this can be a signature golden half. This could be uh, let's dump some green in here. And I'm only going to worry about one side of these because I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I, if I, I might tear them apart and put them on something else. There we go. Now I'm starting to like this. My trouble with making backgrounds is I fall so in love with the backgrounds that I don't want to put anything else over the top of them. All right, I'm going to grab, this is, I love these guys for wiping stuff up because they're, um, there's no design in them, so it's not like a paper towel. And then when the color gets, you know, saturated and dries out, you've got something really nice for some collage material. Okay, I think that's okay. It's wet enough that I'm going to put that aside to dry. And let's do one of the watercolor cards. There's some color left on here. Some color from here. Uh, what I should do is if I put it in my palette and then add some water. It's not quite so intense. Hey, Arlene, you made it. So happy. You know, it's been hard for you. Put some of that orange in there with that green. I'm going to add some of the ink. Just throw all the color mixing stuff out the window. Probably going to wish I had some water on there. Oh, yeah. There we go. I like that. Water. Uh, Linda, you might be in charge of my water bottle, too. These are my colors. I love these. So I had a, um, I'm taking a, a class right now and a question came up in the live that we had in the class today. And I thought it was an interesting question. Um, does it matter to you if the work you create is archival? Does it matter to you if the work you create is archival? These are a bunch of watercolor postcards and I don't do postcard printing anymore on my inkjet, so these will be good to use up. Ooh, congratulations, Janet. Janet sold her last comfort heart. So, yeah, you probably don't feel a whole lot like stitching. I remember when the fires were so bad here last year, um, it was really hard to concentrate on doing anything, as you guys know if you were in the lives with me last year. Let's see if we can get just. Uh, Arlene says she doesn't care if it's archival. Because so many times I'm working with natural materials, it's not something that I'm worried about being archival or not. All right, let me get rid of those lines. Just a little. I'm gonna do something else to get rid of the lines. Kind of just want archival, um, acid free, gonna last forever, you know, doesn't need any kind of extra uh, special handling. 
So you'll see a lot of times you'll see acid-free papers. Let's see, let me get some green on top of that. See, now look at this wonderful piece of paper. It's going to be so cool for collage when it dries. Depending on what I've used to mop it, used to mop, uh, what I've been mopping up, I'll try to kind of unfold them, but it's a little bit easier to handle than tissue paper. Okay, let's see. I need a little bit of something right here. That's more what I was going for. It looks a little bit like the ocean floor or the forest floor. Ocean floor should not be this color. <laughs> Little blotchy, but that's okay. Always takes a few to get worn, warmed up, right? I thought about pulling out the jelly plate, but let's see what we can do with these. I've got some Neo colors and I've got some Stabilo woodies. These are like the, okay, these are the Stabilos that we're used to seeing, but these are the woodies, which are fatter, you know, like fat crayons, and they're just, they're awesome. I love them both for different reasons. Yeah, supposedly archival stuff will not fade yellow or otherwise degrade with age. You know, and you have things like alcohol inks that um, are not color fast. A lot of things are color are not color. Hi, Sharon. Ah, so I was saying I use these. They're in the science department um, to wipe up stuff because there's no design in them. They're stronger than tissue paper. They don't melt when they get wet. And they're very, very thin, so they make some good collage papers. All right, so I'm going to have lines on here because I'm doing it directly on the paper, but we're going to gonna go with it. I forgot about that. I forgot I should have been doing this elsewhere. But let's see if we can make the lines into something. Well, not into something, something, but make them a little bit more deliberate. I'm horrible with mark making because I don't practice it. So it's one of those things to do more of. I like when the stuff just kind of melts into the background. Sometimes the marks stay and sometimes they don't. And I'm okay with that. color here. Sometimes the makeup ones, ooh, you can squeeze out some color. Okay, so these are kind of not super exciting backgrounds right now, but it's okay. Let's see, this is ancient. If it'll drip, it'd be nice. There's nothing like the way ink spreads, right? And this is going to be dark, so I'm going to come in and remove some of that. Yeah, Terry is a champion, that's for sure. And we need one more color. 
because we do, right? Just because we do. Hey, it's Angela, right? Angela, thank you for putting that in your chat. Welcome from Germany. I know it's late for you there. I kind of like that. All right. Okay, this orange is bugging me. It's drying way too bright. Let's do something else to it. Just too much bright. the other problem that happens when I'm doing backgrounds is I forget to talk. I forget I'm not here by myself. I've got acrylic inks. I've got distress inks. I've got my Bombay inks and I've got some um, calligraphy inks and I've got my neo colors and some stabilos. All right, this is a little dirtier. It's still kind of blah. Boy, I wished I'd remembered to put gloves on. My fingers will probably still be stained next week. <laughs> and I'm just trying to get, for those of you that just came in, just trying to get some background started on a few pages so that I can build things up. So I wanted to get the wet stuff drying. What will it be? Well, that's the whole idea is I don't know. <laughs> what I propose is to be thinking in terms of working on a single page, which could become a page in a book or it could become a wall hanging or who knows what, but to work more like a just because book without any uh, planned goals for it. Trying to get the liquid out of this sponge because it's a great color. Yeah, my fingers will be lovely, right? It's going to be. Luckily, I don't have any fancy things to go to in the near future. So. Whoops, I don't want that color. Get some more dark. Yeah, it's always, for me, hard to do wet media live. So thanks for being patient with me. I don't do enough of it for there to be any muscle memory. Hey, Nellie and Ruth Designs. I have got um, this particular piece of paper is just a cotton rag, a cheap cotton rag. It's not caddy, caddy paper, sorry. Uh, I do have some caddy paper here. I've got some watercolor paper. I may have, I think this is mixed media paper underneath. I'm just kind of grabbing a variety because the idea is, you know, if you're going to make a just because book out of paper, why put the pressure on yourself that it has to be any particular kind of paper, that it has to be any particular anything. Here's some watercolor paper, five by seven size. Yeah, just fun with the colors and happiness with the process. That's it. All right. So what I need is my little glass palette. One sec here. My arms are not quite long enough to reach. All right, if we wanna use the Neo Colors, which I do, what I do with them is I color into, onto a piece of glass. Let's get some other colors here. You know, and it's just um, the crayon on the glass. And you can do this with the woodies too. 
because these are just watercolor crayons. And it's surprising to me how much pigment is in these. So see, putting the water on them, it just activates the colors. And now I've got paint. And then we can grab a clean makeup sponge. And let's see what we can do with this. It's not a lot. I just want to kind of stain things. If I had a paintbrush, I could um, wet the paintbrush and then hit the meal colors. There's not a lot of color happening here. So let's do a lot more. So the woodies you can also blend with your finger. You can do that with the neo colors too, just like you would with the Stabilo. It just all depends on the paper because there's no gesso on this paper. It's gonna soak everything up real fast. I was gonna get my ink tints out and I realized I just wasn't ready to make that kind of a mess. You see there's just, just a shading, just a little bit you can see the colors changing. And I could do this with my Tombow watercolor pen, pens too, or watercolor markers, I guess they are, but I pretty much stink with those. <laughs> I need some color left here. <clears throat> oh yeah, my voice is gonna go in and out just because I'm having voice issues lately. Oh, come on, there's liquid there. It doesn't want to come out. <laughs> uh, let's throw some green on there. And what else do we have here? Rusty hinge. So in the group, a few people have been posting their Just Because books. It's so much fun to see what people are doing. I love that people love the concept. Con yeah, concept. Blah. Don't forget to go check out Terry's shop and Instagram feed. She's so awesome to share for everybody. I used way too much distress stuff, so we're going to have to tone it down. Kind of lost the neo colors. That's okay. It's all okay. So let's just take some black ink. Oops, you can tell it's old. It's all starting to solidify. Do a couple more backgrounds and then let's start playing with other ways to get backgrounds on papers. That's it, dirty it up. You know, if you just, anything that you have to make color and you just start piling it on, um, some people want to be a little bit more precise. You know, the precise doesn't work for me because precise uh, makes me think that I'm supposed to be perfect and I stink at that. So, so the black ink, I did not get it moved around enough soon enough. So I'll have to think about that when I'm messing with it. You know, it's kind of one note now, which was not the intention. So that's right. No. The dropper doesn't have a hole in the end of the glass dropper doesn't have a hole in the end of it on this one for some reason. And that's a pain. Hey, Amanda, how are you doing? Happy Wednesday. What are you up to today? Come on. Luckily, my order of more inks just came in. 
All right, let's see if we can kind of soften the edges of that black spot. Ooh, that did not soften it. That just darkened everything. All right, sometimes you just need to stop. <laughs> and know that you can come back at it later. Yeah, I don't have the colors I want here. Come back at it later with some gesso. Just mixing some green browns to get it a little earthier. And we're just gonna let this one go. Gonna let it go. I am not liking most of these. But you know, that's what happens. Let's do another small one. Let's try just getting some edges on. I'm going to still have some lines. Nope, I need the other. I need to fill the water bottle. That's nice. I like that. All right. Let's see. Man, here's another one. They're not blocked. There's just no hole there whatsoever. Not cool, Amsterdam. Oh, no, just glad to hear that you're doing okay, Amanda. Seems to be the day for being technical. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear about that. We will definitely keep him in our thoughts. All right, let's see. Is this color any better? This is really dark. Let me add a little bit of something light. Realize these were quite so fluorescent. Probably would have been better off. There we go. That's a green I like. Better off maybe with watercolors, but you know it's okay. Or the pan, like I said, the pan pastels. That's I'm gonna probably do a video on the pan pastels this week. Now I have a lot of that green, but I'm gonna wet it and we take some off. have as long to work with the uh, acrylic inks. Who did I miss here? Hi, Diane. Stick with my trusty Bombay ink since it usually doesn't let me down. Get some variety in there. Just what link isn't working for you, Angela? All right. We'll let those guys dry. I am not excited about those. So Oh, I have green paint to use up, don't I? Um, let's use up this green paint. 
paint ink stuff. Man, I wish I could figure out what to do with marks. Let's try this. Let's see if any of this is going to show up under the green because the green is pretty dark. Ah, Terry, your own link was not quite showing up. And just a little bit of brown somewhere. Let's put it here. enough brown. Those of you that have more experience with this sort of thing, I'm sure you're having a smile or two and that's okay. I'm okay with that. Only first layers. We have gesso, we have white paint, we have stencil, we have so many things we can do. still have a little bit of ink left so let's just take a postcard and then I'll get my hands semi-clean before I start touching the fabric. Let's wet the paper first. So I'm so heavy handed with color all the time. This is one of those things that I struggle with. I don't know about you guys, but uh, so I'm, I'm very good at cleaning up messes later because I have to be because I, I'm so heavy handed with color. Even though stuff is going to dry lighter, sometimes that's even worse because it means it's going to dry really bright. All right, let me let that dry. And we're going to put these guys away. Let's see. The idea is to not have any open bottles that I will spill because let me tell you, I do that way too often. It's not good. Spilled ink is worse than spilled milk. Get this guy out of the way. I'm gonna get this guy out of the way. All right, we have some color left. Not really on here, just on this. Reunify this, and I have several watercolor sketchbooks that are just filled with color. Just got the first color on something, and they're all one note. So anything that I can build up on them, you know, later if I take all of these and dump them in a coffee or tea bath, it will be really interesting too. Okay, we'll let that stay, and there is still color left. So let's just take this other big one. Yeah, drop sheets really are a lot of fun. I mean, you can't you can't leave color on the plate. That's like leaving chocolate, you know, in your chocolate ice cream in your bowl. You don't do that 
got to eat it all. And then each time you press into it, of course, you're going to get darker sections. You know, I know a lot of people do. I, I haven't fallen in love with the perforated edges yet. Um, I suppose if I had done a lot of actual junk journaling, maybe I might have. But uh, I know it's something that a lot of people really like. So I could come back over this with a stencil or two or three, some texture paste. And I want to kind of unfold these guys. Her name is Tender. Oh, these papers are so cool when they dry. I just love them. Just want to unfold them. It's much easier to do it when they're wet. All right, and then we will go on to some other ways to get backgrounds. Yeah, and these could all end up in the same book. They could end up in five different books. They could end up on the wall. I don't know. I just kind of wanted to do something different. Wow, this one is super saturated, which is cool. And I'm concentrating and not talking. So anybody have any burning questions about arts and crafts and creativity and bravery and all that juicy fun stuff that we like to talk about? All right, I'm going to lay this across both of those. Oh, I have two wall hangings in process and in progress and they're, they're okay. Um, they're in the, you know, ugly duckling stage right now. Sorry for the glass noise there. I mean, I did everything, you know, the most difficult way possible. Grab my baby wipes and see if I can get my hands at least a little bit clean. Um, you know, I the nice way to do it would have been to... Uh, you know, iron all the fabrics onto a backing fabric with some Bonda web, but I didn't do that. <laughs> I just uh, started stitching things together. Yeah, I think the paper will be cool. It's, I think probably the last two pieces are probably better than all the other ones and everything turns green because that's me. I really need to, um, I just need to explore some other color palettes. Yes, working on, I'm working on that. I'm working on the lace book, the lace just because book. I have three commissions that I'm working on. Um, two of them are books. Janet says, is there any other way except difficult? Evidently not in my world. <laughs> Arlene says, I like the edges, but I love to snip them off, drop them in a jar, and use them in all their colorful glory in small mosaics. I don't have the patience for mosaics, so I love that you do. I love it when you share those because uh, that's it's a, it's a different mindset. I did two more weavings recently, and I don't know. So far, I'm not – it's another one of those things. Just not quite my thing. But it could also be just that I haven't done it enough. I haven't explored enough different things. Uh, I did find more fibers I like. All right, that should be good enough for handling my stuff. Let's see, where can I put these? Because they're wet over there. All right, let's take a look at something like this. Losing my hair. And what if we didn't use paint for a background? And I want to start, hmm, do I want to start with that size or do I want to start with this size? 
We'll do one. We'll do two at once. Woohoo! Okay. So what if instead we started with fabric as a background? Because you know, fabric. Maybe Sharon. Maybe that would make me feel better about it. I'm just. I just haven't been excited so far. Of course, you know, guys, this is going to be decision time with me, and it takes me forever to make up my mind about which one of these to use. But and if you just think of fabric as paper, that's so if I'm thinking of it in terms of building, say, a cluster. Okay, we can do, let's do three at once. Oh, we're gonna live on the wild side. We're gonna do one that's on just fabric. We'll do two that are on paper. Really like that crusty part. Arlene, I'm so glad you were able to uh, check in a little bit. Glad you're doing well. Post something recent in, your, in the Facebook group so we can see what you've been up to because I know you're always doing something. Let's see. Thank you. These this this is my real obsession, and I've discovered as much as I love paper, I think I'm beginning to love fabric even more, which I did not think I would ever say. Which makes me rethink the way I've got some of the studio set up. And one thing, though, when you when you dye fabric the way I do, just willy nilly, crazy times, you do not have um, a lot of things that necessarily all match together. Did you like that one, Diane? I I didn't get a lot of feedback from people on that one, but I really really loved being able to do those fabric covered or fiber covered wires. Oh, I like that on that. Hmm. You might need to do another one with that on that. Too many choices. Of course, just getting these things, you know, laid out. Because remember, we've still got, you know, we've got all these goodies that we got to figure out what we're going to do with. Maybe we put the green on the white. Ooh, the green on the white or the green on the yellow. This is a slightly different shade. Hmm. I take forever, don't I? The green on the yellow, you liked it on the yellow? You're trying it, Diane? Yeah, Sharon, you can't. Although sometimes you can take the commercial fabric, let's see if I have it still out here, and uh, and you can get some really cool results. Yeah. This was um, <clears throat> some of the Tim Holtz fabric, and the backside is interesting, but just getting some color on it, I really like. Okay, so if we do the green on the yellow, No, that yellow is not going to work anywhere. This one we just used. I'll cut some burlap. I'm cutting the little selvage edge off because I like to use them differently. Oops, looks like I move myself down. Well, I'm glad somebody was trying the, uh, the wires. I did another couple of experiments yesterday. They were not successful. Um, 
I should probably put them out and show them to you guys, though, one of these days so that you can, somebody else might want to play with it more. Uh, I like that. Okay, let's get some little pieces here. What would I do with this one? <clears throat> I tried not to bring out too many fabrics because what happens with me is I bring out so many and then I can't make up my mind at all. That actually has some blue in it. I'm not doing blue. This is um, like that curtain material, the sheer curtain material, and it takes up dyes and colors very irregularly. And I just, let me show it to you on this. I love it because you can do so many different things with it. I think it belongs there. It's another piece of commercial fabric that was very pink, which wasn't me, but I like it now. So I'm just kind of trying to group some things that I like together. This probably could use something light over here. And then we can build stuff. What about some lace? Oh, yeah, and I was going to show you guys my what I'm doing with the seam ripper thingy. Uh, your trusty seam ripper can do so many interesting things. Okay, no, I'm not going to worry about that. All right, let's see what else we have here. Now imagine all my wet papers were dry. I could be doing the same sort of thing, building these things up on the wet papers, which I will do. Um, no, that's the wrong shade. Some more cheesecloth. Cheesecloth in how many different colors? You know, you can never get enough colors of cheesecloth. I want the lighter one there to brighten that up. Hmm, we got some rusty colored one. This was colored with a uh, full strength Bombay ink. So it's, it's very stiff. I don't know if you can tell from there, but it's very stiff which gives it a completely different look on the page. What else do we have here? And of course the cheesecloth comes in the different size holes. All right. So if we were going to make a background with this, although I like that crusty edge, I'd like to see if I can fray it. Thank you, Sharon. Sharon says, I've got to stop worrying about whether I'm working quickly enough for all of you and work at my own pace. You're here for the creativity, not how quickly I get there. Thank you. That I appreciate that. I really do. Because I do worry. Um, this one is painted fabric, so it is not going to give up the edges easily, but your trusty seam ripper can help it along. Well, you know, I didn't have any, like I said, plan, thanks Lori, for where I was going, except that I just wanted to give this a try, and knowing that you know, finally I'm past the point of saying, oh, well, if this didn't work, you know, this is horrible, my day is ruined. That's not the case. If something doesn't work, you know, it's a piece of paper and some cheap fabric. I'm, I'm not gonna stress about it. Let's see if we can fray part of it easier to do when it's larger. Be careful, because this is how I 
managed to impale myself with my seam ripper a few weeks ago. Yeah, everything's a process. And, you know, the more I do any one thing, the more I realize I can appreciate the process. So I'm purposely just kind of messing up this fabric. This is what I do in just the, the fabric books. I don't think this is going to fray either. I sit in front of the TV sometimes at night and just fray fab fray fabric. Ooh, that's a tongue twister, isn't it? All right, so I think I need to rip this up some more. Yeah, the tears are great. Yeah, if somebody's going super fast, I mean, it's one thing if you're watching somebody's video and you decide, okay, I just want to speed things up and just watch and I'll, I'll usually turn somebody's voice off then. Um, you know, and I'll, I'll watch a lot of videos at the fastest speed. Well, this side's more interesting, isn't it? And some of the fabrics didn't get ironed, and that's cool because depending on what I want to do, see now I'm looking at that and I'm thinking I'm really liking this piece of fabric. Let's see. Just for the heck of it. Do we like it on something green? Or do we like it on the white? Or maybe it belongs. Oh, it belongs on that one, doesn't it? Yeah, tender. You, you, especially the the commercial paints. I was going to do that video today too, and I didn't. So I have a big stack of commercial fabrics to paint. Sorry, commercial fabrics to paint. I think this one right here is what I like. Okay, we're going to work on one piece at a time, and I want some of the this other stuff. Okay, this is just a piece of sheer. Yeah, that's too brown. I don't know if you can have something that's too brown, but it felt like too brown. And hmm. I'm going to try a few different things here, but I want to show you what I love about this kind of fabric. I don't know if it'll work with the ribbon. We'll give it a shot. And here's some lace. Or not lace. Uh, yeah, lace. Ah! <laughs> Lori says, I laugh at myself because part of my shop name is market and I often only have one item in there. Yes. <laughs> ah, shop. So this is a good time to remind you guys. I have got, um, this is a piece of satin ribbon that I have stamped on kind of randomly. I have got two lists that I'm keeping. One is the VIP first dibs list. And that is for anything that um, I make that becomes for sale. If you're on that list, I will go down the list and people will get first come, first serve, chance to buy. Once you've bought something, you can choose to either stay on the list or go, you know, go to the bottom. Or once you've bought something, you either choose to be off the list or go to the bottom of the list so people move up. Diane. Oh, did you get here? I missed that. Hello, and Adele. Love, love, love seeing both of you. So if you want to be on the VIP first dibs list, send me a message. And the other list will be for um, special private sales like the Sparkle Shimmer Papers that are going to be coming up soon. And that will be a private sale. So if you want to be on that list, you need to send, send me a message and I will keep two lists going. All right. So now this, you know, acrylic, satiny, whatever ribbon. Um, is getting a lot more interesting to me now that I'm tearing it up. It would make a nice window. You could do something like that. If you don't like the stamping, you can turn it over and do something on the other side. But that is already much more interesting to me. I haven't tried it with a piece of, this is that 
lacy seam binding that's always so cheap in the thrift stores. But once you start tearing it up, it's not going to look, because what always bothers me about this is how perfectly straight the edges are. You know, it's that perfect word. I don't want the word perfect. I want things that are imperfect. Oh. Now look at that. Isn't, look at this. Isn't that better? I don't know if you can, probably won't focus on anything like that little okay some sheer curtain material so adele what have you been up to lately it's just something about ripping these things up that just makes them so much more interesting so let's see diane since you were last here you packed up and moved and you got house plants and i can't remember what else i've seen has been going on so i'm going to tear that one all the way yeah all right, I might not use all of these on this piece, but I want to have options. Oh my goodness, Sharon. I, I tell you what, it was Beatrice Helton that taught me this uh, when I took a class with her and just really opened my eyes to how many things could be better once they were ripped up. I mean, the straight edges are just boring. And while you can do it after you've sewn them down, it's a whole lot easier to do it ahead of time. So the little scraps of lace, like if you're sewing, you know, some lace into a journal and you've got, you know, one or two inches left over, you know, take your picker at it. Oh, you've been cooking too. Nice. And you've been singing. I've seen songs on Facebook. All oh, the creative energy. Wow, 35 of you watching right now. Hope some of you have done the thumbs up. Get rid of the last of these straight edges. Been working on the Lace Just Because book at night, and I last night I was looking at it saying, boy, this will go a whole lot faster if I just put it all under the sewing machine, and I couldn't make myself do it. It's like, nope. All right, so let's let's build this up here. Maybe the sides really make me happy. Ah, there we go. Get a little bit of the fraying happening on the sides. Wait a minute. I'm missing chat. Ah, Adele's chasing her granddaughter. Well, you know, that's a good reason not to have time to come hang out with us. I wished I'd been able to chase my grandson around when he was little. I can't, well, yeah, I'm not on YouTube. I'm just staying in StreamYard right now. I can just see that there are now 33 people watching. I have been good. Thank you, Adele. I have got, oh my goodness, if you see on Instagram, I have got this beautiful pile of fabric wrapped in rusty objects drying out in the sun. I cannot wait for them to dry. Maybe by Friday I can open them up. All right, so let's see what, what do we like in here? We've got, okay, the coral doesn't quite go with that. Of an interesting button, but it's too big. I did not have any rhyme nor reason to what I grabbed to bring out here. Piece of metal. No, not feeling the metal. Driftwood. Shark tooth is probably not going to go. A little bit of fossil mite, though. Hmm. Hey, Debs. Yes, get to those scraps and rip them up. Huh. Kind of like this bead. Yeah, get your postman to take a pay cut. That would be fun, huh? Be able to ship to you. This looks, hmm. Hmm. 
And I'm removing things that I think aren't working. I've got some sea glass. No, that's just too white. Ah, uh, might be kind of interesting. Hmm. Seem to like the darker on this one. Kind of like that stone too. Yeah, there's just some really good stuff happening out there. But I think it's probably going to be a couple more days before it's dry. That's kind of big, but I like the texture of this twig. Hmm. I'm so attracted to this piece of metal, but no. Okay. So we've got some ripped up lace. I like this stuff ripped. No, oh, we didn't rip any of the burlap. Let's make it a little thinner. Oh, good. Oh, I'm glad you're excited. You got to make sure you post pictures so we can see. You know, and if you just start piling things up, I might actually have, ah, I do have over here. No, I don't. <laughs> it's not what I thought I had. But you can just pile these guys up like this and stitch them together and have some things ready. Hmm, maybe this guy goes in there. That one's smaller. We getting somewhere? I think we're getting somewhere. All right, what if we move these guys up? That gives us a I kind of feel like these guys still need to be more. Yeah, I just really want it to we need to put all our rip all our fabrics up and then leave them outside in the winter. There we go, we're a little too precise. That's better. Kind of like that. I can add this. I love this little bit of seam binding now. You know, and then take this, let's see, where is it good? Okay, this piece of lace that I did a little bit on, but I didn't do a lot on. Then just go at it with your fingers. Oh, Debs, great. If you're in the Facebook group, please post what you do or tag me on Instagram. I love, you know, it's wonderful to see people doing stuff that they're inspired by other people. I hope you all tag the people that have inspired you so that they can see where your, in, their in, your inspiration has taken you. Get something lighter back there. All right, and then I'm liking this so far. I don't know, sewing or gluing, that is a good, originally, originally what I was gonna do was just take a piece of paper and glue some fabric on there for the background and then start building it up and stitch on top of that. Now I'm looking at this and I'm wondering if maybe I need to sew everything to the fabric before I worry about attaching it to this. Just kind of feels like maybe it's a, a K 
cage. I mean, look at this rock. I don't know. I turned the autofocus off, so it does make it hard to see. Okay, and the hairs don't help, but look at it. That rock has just got, uh, put it on the dark. It's got some really interesting edges. So I'm thinking it's just sort of wrapped in there. And this might need, I should have at least one piece of wire out here. I just need to remember, uh, remember where I put it because this should really be wired. Think, think, think. Where did I? Oh, it should be in here. Okay, here's a tip for you guys. Does everybody, uh, does anybody use fairy lights around the house? You know, the wonderful little battery powered fairy lights you can put all over the place and they eventually die and don't work anymore. And what you have is copper wire. You have thin copper wire that you can do things with. And the little light is still there, but you can cut that off pretty easily. Or if you want to do something with it, you can actually paint that and you'd have you know another little texture thing, but I'm just gonna cut it off because I just wanna see, this may not be enough wire. I'm gonna, ah, no Fabri-Tac over here, is there? Wait a minute, maybe there is. No, I'm gonna bump, definitely gonna bump things. All right, we're gonna see if we can do this without help. Okay. I think this is going to be tough. Normally what I do is a little dab of Fabri-Tac to hold it onto the slippery stuff. Yeah, I might need to use that wire for something else. I think we're just going to sew that. All right, let's 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 get that sewn on first. Hmm. If I sew it with this, I can make a fuzzy, but I don't know if that's going to fit in my needle. But we're going to definitely need a fuzzy because we always need a fuzzy, right? Oh, awesome. I'm, hey, Lori. I was going to dye fabrics for your project today, and I didn't. <laughs> I'm playing with something else instead. Oh, this is going to be too white. I don't want that color. Yeah, I think we want this one instead. Yeah, this could definitely be the cover of a book, but... Again, uh, and those of you that weren't here at the beginning, what I'm trying to do is think in terms of pages. You know, so this could be a page in a book. I know, shame on me, right? I just knew I was not going to get it all done in time to be able to come live. So I will probably do that tomorrow. Yeah, and I'm trying to do more things without words because words have always been my go-to. I do, honestly do not know if I'm going to be able to sew this on without something holding it down, so we will see. We will see if we can make this work. Nothing wrong with a little bit of glue to hold things in place, but... Sometimes thread is easier than wire. And I can always come back in here with wire as well. Ooh, poking myself. 
Yeah, I love, I mean, you know, 30 years as a writer, I love words. But I realize that not everybody does. So I'm trying to uh, see if I can find other ways to express myself. Okay, so if I pull this, that's what I want, is I want it kind of nest-like. Hey, Dee Dee, how are you, darling? Missing you. We need to catch up soon. Let's see. All right, it's not quite going the way I thought it would, but I'm going to be totally fine with this. It is going to want a little, little bit of glue just to make sure that the threads stick to this. I am doing awesome, especially since it's Wednesday and you guys always make me feel awesome. Oh, of course I had to use the longest needle. It makes it a little bit difficult to tie a knot. Yeah, you gotta be you. You absolutely have to be you. Oh, look at how cool is that. I just love that. Love it, love it, love it. Let's see how much that will focus. Will it focus? It won't focus. Trust me, I will have to um, put a picture of it up in the group later. Okay, so do we have everything we want on here? Do we need something more? I didn't put the burlap on. This down here is bothering me because it's too even. So something has to go. That, that helps. Something has to go. Yeah, boundaries really, they do, they help. All right, and we're gonna, oh, without boundaries? See, I kind of like it sometimes with boundaries because it forces you to think a little differently. It's a little less perfect now. There we go. And I'm getting some long threads, which always makes me happy. Yeah, if, you, if you're gonna paint fabric with acrylic paint, even watered down acrylic paint, and you think you're gonna want it frayed, fray it ahead of time. Okay, Angela, it was wonderful seeing you here. Sweet dreams. You're afraid ahead of time and you'll be a lot happier with than trying to do it like this after the fact because it just, everything sinks into the fibers, of course, and makes it more difficult. Uh, let me get this one out. Well, when I was teaching poetry, we would always give the boundaries to the students. And, you know, it's like, okay, you have to use X number of words, or um, you have to use these particular words in your project, or it has to be X number of lines, or it has to be on this topic. And, you know, it just kind of opens things up. <laughs> Lori, yes, you can tell when I've ignited. That makes perfect sense. I'm glad you can tell. It's just like, and, and you have to go through the steps, right? You have to, th there's no shortcut to ignition mode. You just kind of have to um, let it go and see where it takes you. I'm liking this piece a lot more now. It is so hard to learn to trust yourself. Uh, and it's a constant process. It's not like you wake up one morning and you say, oh, wow, you know, I'm just, I'm awesome. And I'm going to believe, you know, that everything I do is going to succeed. I wish that was the case, but it's not, it's not. And we have to just um, 
get up each day and do it all over again. All right, I definitely want this on there. But you also have to surround yourself with people you trust so that when you're feeling like, you know, you don't have it in you, you're not believing what you're doing, you can ask those people in your trust circle and they're going to tell you, you know, yeah, you're on track, you're on fire, you're ignited. And when they tell you that, you have to believe them because they're in your circle. And that makes it a little bit easier, at least for me. I like things going off the edge. I think this is going to be somewhere like, hmm. I love this. I'm not sure where it's going to go. Awesome. I am so glad you like that book. That's a wonderful book. There are so many great images in there to play with. Yeah, this might end up being the cover of a book, but it's not green, so I don't know. Not sure where it will go. Hmm. That could just kind of be sewn on there. Oh, Debs, as soon as I get off of here, then I will go let you in. I'm glad you're joining us over there. I don't know, is it too much? Now that's what I'm wondering. I'm starting to doubt myself. Is it too much or is it not enough? That's the question is, have you pushed yourself too far or not? Oh, there we go. We're getting there. We're getting there. It need, needed just a little more. <laughs> what, Lori? Excuse you. It's not green, so you wouldn't want this on the cover. It's not green. I can make it green, but that's not the way we're going to go. I think, let's see how long of a fuzzy we can get. Keep going. Yeah, I, I think we're going to keep going. Need something off the bottom here. What have I got? I've got some other fuzzies. Some other, ooh, where's my seam ripper? So those of you that have hopped on the chindi rug train and you got a bunch of fibers and they're not silk, you got a bunch of fabrics and they're not silk, they're probably synthetics that are going to rip really nicely if you try something like this. And if I want the length of it, I'm gonna... Yeah, it's not done yet. That's right. If if you're not happy, it's not done yet. It doesn't mean that you did anything wrong. And there are times, okay, that I'll start something like this and then I'll put it aside. I'll just let it sit on the uh, island in the studio and let it sit there for a couple of days. And every time I walk by, I'll look at it again and wonder what I need to do to it. Now look at how wonderful this th shreds. I just love this. Get it started with your seam ripper and then go to town on your acrylics. Bye, Tunder. Take care. The Facebook group that should be a link in the com in the description of this um, video. It's Susan Taylor Brown Creative Circle. All right. I like this a lot. I got something hanging down off of here. Yep, 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 yep. All right, and then maybe I can put my little... Nope, that doesn't feel right. Too dark. I don't know, maybe my little stone doesn't go where I thought it did. Maybe it goes... Oh, maybe it goes over there. Love you too, Tender. Tender. 
something just sort of coming out like that. And wait a minute. Uh, So picture, you have something like this, then you can take it up a notch, you know, and put it on a colored background, and this is going to pop even more. Thank you, Terry. All right, let's see about starting to stitch some of this stuff down. Um, where did I put my needle? All right, I want a smaller needle, though. It's, it's all coming together, isn't it, Dina? It is coming together. I always doubt. Always doubt. I won't even say that I don't always doubt. I always doubt just because that's my nature. Let's stick with this brown threads. One of the things I had to get over when I started doing this was, oh, my colors of my threads don't match or my, you know, I don't have the right needle or I don't, you know, it's, all of art is a matter of letting go of any of those perfectionist hangups that you have, that we all have. Okay, Barbie, thank you, because I did not remember, I kept seeing Sharon call you Barbie, and I just didn't make the connection until just now. Good, you're getting better every day. Yeah, it's just, you know, the... It's a constant process. I mean, I don't know. Maybe there are people that wake up in the morning and they're like, no, I'm not going to be perfect today, but I'm not one of them. <laughs> I'm feeling like I need a little something else over here. Maybe we take a little. These are the from Sorry Ribbon, and I just love them because they're so moldable. Thank you, Dina. All right, I think up here, because I'm going to have stuff that's hanging down. Don't call you late for dinner. Gotcha. <laughs> so we've got the shredded lace and the shredded uh, curtain material. And just kind of want to stitch it. To this twig yeah perfection is so overrated but yet so many of us are hung up on it right We're like oh we got to do got to be this right and, and it's because of the voices in our head you know those are the ones we need to kick off our bus it's like we don't want we don't need to be that perfect person anymore we don't um, there's no payoff in being perfect and I've told this story before but it bears repeating and some of you maybe haven't heard it before you know, if you had the opportunity, if you had the ability, okay, just the magical ability that everything you created was absolutely perfect. The first time you made it, you sat down at your studio every morning and you created this perfect painting, this perfect piece of art. And then somebody knocked on the door and they said, I want to buy that piece of art you just created. And you're like, okay, great. And then the next day you got up and you did it over again. Where is the, where's the thrill in that? Where is the thrill of that? Thank you, Lori. This is, um, I, I think what I was trying to do is get in the mood to work in messy mode. Yeah, strings hanging everywhere just get me so excited. Well, I think we're trained to be line linear people, you know, in school, you know, following, I mean, unless you went to like a Montessori or one of those types of schools, which depending on our age bracket, my age bracket, they didn't have anything like that, you know, when I was a kid. You know, we weren't taught to value the exploratory process. We were taught to, you know, um, be like everybody else. We were taught to make sure that we, you know, did our papers the same way. Everybody's penmanship was the same way. Everybody's math problems were solved the same way. Um, it's just so boring. It's just so boring. Yes, the excitement, Adele, is in the journey. 
Do you want to make sure this all stays on though? Okay. Just come down here a little bit. Ah. <laughs> Can't grip my needle. Lori says, I say, do what makes you happy. Some will love it, some will not. So who cares as long as we are happy with it? Self-discovery, exactly. That is it, exactly. But, you know, if we've had people in our past that hold up other people as examples, why couldn't you be more like so-and-so? Why couldn't you do, you know, I, I had a dentist when I was a kid as though I had any control over it other than brushing my teeth regularly. Why can't your teeth be more like your mother's? Talk about pressure. Yeah, Barbie, that's where our insecurities come from. Sharon says, I was trying to drive my bus in someone else's lane. As soon as I discovered I meant to be in my own lane, I can duck from one lane to another. And that's when my creativity speeds up. Exactly. I am so glad you learned to drive in your own lane. And maybe you're not driving a bus. Maybe you're driving, you know, a pickup truck or a Maserati. I mean, you know, it, it's your journey. It is your journey. Okay, is that all on there? Kind of gathered that up a little more than I planned on it. So we might add, I don't know, we might add something else. We might add something else. Pull that apart. I think that's going to be good there. Pickup truck for you, yeah. <laughs> I'd like a little pickup truck myself. I don't drive much anymore, though. My sweet husband does all the driving and errands and all that stuff for us. I pretty much just stay here and hang out with art stuff all day. I am a lucky gal. Ah, oh, Lori, that sucks. I am sorry you had that in your background and I am so proud of how far you have come into blossomed into the beautiful woman that you are today, spreading so much positivity for everybody else. Adele, some of it I think is, I think um, kids today, I mean, you probably see this with your granddaughter. She's probably got a completely different school situation despite covid than what you know we had when we were kids i know that's the way for me um even my my kids my own kids had much more encouragement of free thinking you know and they're 40. all right i think this one's done so that's going to go up there somewhere Yeah, prove, prove, and it's hard when you're a prover, when your personality is such that you want to prove people all the time. It's hard. Okay, I know that's going to go there, but I'm going to maybe leave that. Hmm. Trying to figure out how to sew all this together. Okay. Pull those guys off. And is there anything else I want to add before I, oh, my fuzzies. I was going to put the fuzzies back there. The word perfect does not exist in my creative world, said Debs, or any other worlds. Yeah. What about the driving? Whoops. What did I miss, Adele? The age and the driving. Lori, I am so damn proud of you. Honestly, it, it takes a lot of work to overcome stuff like that. You know, and many of us have stories. Not all of us share them. Um, 
you know, we have to remember that everybody is an iceberg and we do not see all that other stuff that's under. Oh, you don't drive much either. Yeah. I don't, it's like my car is old and it's starting to get rusted in spots, but I can't rationalize a new one because I don't drive. You know, so every time you're thinking, wow, that person's like really irritating to me, just stop and th remember they're an iceberg. You have no idea. You know, every one of us could tell a story, I'm sure, that would bring the rest of the group to tears about something that's happened to us in the past. But, you know, we don't need to share that in order to share our creative energy. We just need to know we're alike in that we have all carried baggage way longer than we need to. Look at that, you guys. You guys got me so hooked on finishing this. Now I'm even going to stay past my time. I want to finish this one. All right. It's just kind of willy-nilly. What's it going to look like back there? I think that will be good. I probably need more thread, but let's now yeah, let's let's be smart and thread the needle before we start. You're right, Sharon. Everybody has a different definition of perfect, and that's really good to remember, too. You know, your perfect may not be my perfect, and that's okay. I mean, yeah, let's celebrate how wonderfully unique every one of us is, how lucky we are that we have just so much creativity. Now I'm wondering if I want to turn this a little bit over and see the words. No, I don't like the shiny. That was a quick decision. Hey, Rita. Um, I'm just kind of building up a piece of paper that could be a journal cover. It could be a page in a book. Just kind of trying to get people to think outside of trying to have a complete journal or artist book. And just think in terms of pages. Uh, messed up my angle. I don't like that angle now. What is it? What's wrong? Maybe this is too big. Perfectly imperfect. That's us. Yep. All right. This might be better. Diane, good for you for getting some help, though. It's not easy. We love Lori. Okay, I like this better. Um, yeah, let's see if we can get it all to stick together. I'm not purposely trying to hide stitches, but if I if there is a place that I can tuck a stitch behind, so since this is not a stitch project per se. Thank you, Adele. I love all of you guys. Wednesdays are awesome because of all of you. Texture, yeah, all about the texture. Thank you. You know, your seam ripper is your friend. We were talking about that earlier, Rita. Going to have a seam ripping session afterwards. All right, guys, I'm, if you say something to me in chat, you have to put it in all caps because I'm going to try and concentrate since I'm running late here. I'm okay staying, but I know there's other people that want to go do other things. All right, so then if I have this still 
I'm still okay here. And my cheesecloth, I attach it there. And of course, you know, your jam might be to grab the glue and glue this down. There's nothing wrong with that. But I have found if I don't do a little bit of stitching every day, I get grumpy. Rita's got a requested extra grungy journal. Well, you do the grunge really well, Rita. Okay, I think that'll hold that on. All right, now, if that's gonna go up there, let me, oops, tie this off. Almost there, guys, almost there. Okay, so this is gonna come off at that angle. Now we want to get, oh, balancing checkbooks all day, that's not fun. I used to have to do that in high school, I worked with the car dealership for my mom and did some of that. It's not fun. I don't like it. I'm not sure that the burlap belongs. I don't know. What do you think? Maybe if it's not so together, it's a little looser. Deb's working on an altered book, book for a client. Almost done. Ooh. Yeah, Shabby and me, not so much. This is feeling a little perfect here, so we're going to... I've been thinking about building a uh, Princess Pink pack. I have so many pr pink things and I don't do pink. You know, the shabby chic people love it. So I'm thinking maybe I'll just make a big old jumbo sale of just one big old pile of pink stuff. It's a little better. I just don't know. The burlap might be too much. Maybe it needs to be elsewhere. What did your daughter send you, Janet? I still have this guy that's going to, oh, maybe that's what we do. Then this guy comes down here. And then this little guy is going to go there. I think. All right, so I think what we do first is... Dad asked if Ultra ULTA charge for 275 was to pay for a utility. Mom said, yes, I pay the bills. Cute. <laughs> Feel more anchored with grunge. Nice. All right. I got to figure out how I'm going to attach this. I think I'm going to sew these two first. Oh, it's a makeup store. Oh, got it. Okay. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's just pink doesn't make me happy to work with it. So I think I'm ready to uh, de-stash all my pink. Hopefully this is going to stay together. Just has to stay together until it's time to get it to the card. And while I'll stitch it to the card, I'm also going to um, do a little bit of fabric tack underneath. Lori says, I have your Christmas digital with the pink eco leaves. You love it. And use the illustrations in the kit last year, but I haven't used the leaves yet. When I do, it's going to be fun. Oh, that'll be great. You can also take that pink pile of leaves and um, dip it in coffee dye or tea dye and then get another shade to go with it. So then you have twice as many colors to play with. All right. Oh, that's attached nicely. Okay. So I just need to work my way back down here. thread down to the bottom so that I can attach that white just a little bit more on the other side. I'm just going to come up over here and give it a little, little stitch or two. Ah, it's curling on me. Ornery piece of fabric. Janet, how far are you on your beautiful big cross stitch project? That face must be taking shape now even more. Okay, so if we have this here, this guy's going to come kind of up like so. So hopefully I can uh. Bloom Stitch Rita is the the face is done. Oh, now you're working on the back. I'm going to have to go check out your Instagram and see See where you are on it. Barbie's watching on her phone and has her iPad set up so you can subscribe to others. That's awesome double duty there. Let's see, this might be better. I go up and over like I did on the stone to start with. Oh, I'm in love with this now. I am so in love with this. I don't know what this is going to become. Is this a, a cover for a book? It could be. All right, let's knot this off and see what we have. Not cutting any threads. See, Lori, all threads hanging. All right, and then where's my other little... Oh, I was going to do something... I oh, love that coming through. Where's my stick? There we go. Yeah, it might be. It would be just about right for like a 5 by 7 book as a cover. I rip this guy up a little more. Still too perfect. Yep, 
Lori, you and I have to talk later. Because <laughs> it would be a good cover. Um, I just kind of feel like I this I need to balance something here. Well, you're gonna have fun, Diane, if a lot of these people are new to you because we have got some fabulous people here. Let's see. It's another piece of I can almost have that coming off the edge. Grab my steam ripper. Got my lace. Let's see what we can do to it. The seam ripper on the lace is a great thing to do with the um, acrylic, cheap acrylic lace that you're thinking, oh, you know, the stuff you bought before you, you learned about the good stuff, right before you had the antique lace. Ah, what's on my table? So I have, that's a great question, Rita. I have got um, the little remnants from the sides of Sari Silk Ribbon. I've got the fuzzies that I make from um, my jute. This is jute string that I like to separate. <laughs> yes, Lori. <laughs> I have lace. I have um, different fabrics that I've dyed. Uh, threads. There's some cheesecloth that's been in different colors. Twigs. A uh, stone that I wrapped up in some old um, seam bias seam binding. I'm on Instagram as Susan Taylor Brown. You can find me over there pretty easily. Sometimes the cheap lace is really nice. Yeah. But sometimes it's, you know, it's frustrating because it's like you have so much of it. What are you going to do with it? And this is great. You know, put some um, diluted acrylic paint on it. The cheap lace also works good for the, the lace book that I'm doing. There are books. I have several of them in progress. Because once you start cutting it up into little pieces, it doesn't feel as stiff. So a couple of videos back on my channel, there's um, a video on using various mixed media supplies on your fabrics and lace. My favorite is to use bamboo, or one of my favorites, I should say, is to use Bam Bombay India inks. There we go. See, it just needed a little bit more. Look at that. Um, but I use alcohol inks, distress sprays, uh, diluted paint, um, ink tints. I use anything and everything. Uh, we had five bottles of wine go bad and I, I dyed stuff with that. I know Adele, I wish you would show your work. You haven't joined us over in the group yet either. Have you? All right, let's get that last little piece on. Yeah, it, the wine had gone bad and gone, gotten corked, I guess they call it, and it just didn't taste good. So um, my husband asked if I could use it, and I'm like, yep. And so I just boiled it to get it really concentrated and soaked a lot of lace and fabric in it. And, you know, I got some really nice color. All right, some more fuzzies. And where's the other pile of fuzzies? This is some of the um, acrylic yarn that I separated in the video I did the other day on uh, wrapping your wires. Yeah, if it makes color, you know, I, I always, I have a huge basket in the studio um, of just fabric waiting for color. 
I'm trying to decide if I need something more. Yeah, just that little bit of fuzzy there and then the lace. Yep, that's what we want. Hi, Gretchen. Thank you. That's kind of my, my wheelhouse is the earth tones. All right, this one's going to be a little tougher to gather, but ah. Yeah, I just love the fuzzies. There's just something about taking, you know, string and yarn and separating it into all those little fuzzy bits and wool roving. I didn't put any wool roving on here. I have it right next to me. All right, let's. Turmeric, yes. Turmeric's fun. It is a fugitive dye. So uh, depending on what fabrics and fibers that you use it on, it has varying degrees of light fastness. Sometimes it can fade really fast. If you rinse it too much, you'll lose the color. So just be aware of that so that you're not disappointed. Yeah, the, the fuzzy sari silk is so cool. The little fuzzy bits. Let's see. I have not done red cabbage. I did um, various berries. In fact, our um, Himalayan blackberries are ripening. And if the birds don't get them all, I will do those this year. No, this one's curled back and I might have stitched it down curled back, but I can come in there with my trusty scissors. Yeah, and if it's going in a journal, it's not going to fade nearly as fast as if it was something that you were um, putting on the wall in the sun. Yeah, it's, I don't rinse either. Unless it's something... Um, you know, like those gauze rolls that I use for a wipe up cloth instead of paper towels and they're really super saturated. I will put a, a tub of water, you know, down and rinse it in there because there's so much color left that I can use then on more papers. I mean, I just keep saving the colors. <gasps> oh, weaving remnants. Awesome. A local weaver gave me a lot of her... Um, what do they call those at the end? Thrums? Oh, Nelly, you have a video showing and working with them? Awesome. We will go check that out. Ah, 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 ah. She gave them to me to make cordage, so I've been doing a lot of cordage with them. Okay, I think, I think that's attached enough. Okay, I think... I think she's done. Get caught on the branch here. Yes, Deb, would love to see you sharing more. It's scary to share. But just keep in mind that if any negative feedback that you get, that is a reflection on the person leaving the feedback, not on you and your work. That person maybe isn't brave enough to do what you're doing. All right. I think, I think she's done. Let's, let's give her, let's give her some breathing space. Let's pull the needle and put it back. And Let's grab one of the green backgrounds here just so we can see. Show her off a little bit. What do you think? I think she's done. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really happy with it. It went a completely different direction than I had originally planned. And I love it when that happens because it just, I don't know, it just feels right. Okay, Janet, take care. Thank you so much. 
So uh, the only reason I'm not finishing off this last little bit is I am going to put a couple dabs of fabric tack on here before I stitch it the rest of the way down. But I think this is going to become a uh, journal cover for a book. Isn't she great? I'm really happy with her. I'll post a picture of it in the Facebook group when you can get, you can see all the details. You know, and you could just build it up. I mean, depending on when you do something like this, think about how you could build it up. Okay. So then you, you could put another, I mean, you can just keep building it up. You could put it on a piece of fabric if you didn't want to put it on a page. Oh, thank you, Barbie. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me longer than usual. I had such a good time working on this. And now I'm anxious to play with some more. <laughs> yeah, I think it's going to be a good journal cover or book cover. All right. Thank you, everybody. I was so happy that you were able to hang with me today. I appreciate it. You go have a wonderful week. Make beautiful art. Be brave and share it. And I will see you all in the Facebook group. Okay. Thank you. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Oh, thank you, Adele. Thank you, Barbie. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Lori. Bye-bye.